Hi, everyone. Many years ago, when my son was just two and a half years old, he was having a phone conversation with his grandma. He just received a new ball, and he took the handset, pointed at the ball, and said, Grandma, look at my new present. But he was holding a device that carried his voice, but not his excitement, not the sparkle in his eyes, and, of course, not the ball that he just received. In that moment, my son's innocent attempt to share his excitement revealed a profound truth. A need for connection is not just about words. It's about sharing experiences and emotions. At that day, my journey began. A journey to transform these limitations, transform how we share, how we connect, and how we understand each other in this digital age. After that moment with my son, I decided to double down on communication technology. I actually dedicated my professional career to that industry. With each role, I saw advancements in human connections. I believe that today, we're at a point of time where we can leverage advancements in AI technology to enhance human connections. Now, fast forward from the telephone to the early 2000s. I was a young product manager at Cisco, working on probably the project that was the most innovative at that time, the Cisco Telepresence. Now, Cisco Telepresence wasn't just an improvement to video conferencing. It was actually a concept where you would simulate the in-meeting experience with participants in other continents. Imagine stepping inside a room with all the distance, leaning towards the table and feeling that you could reach out and shake the hand of a person on the other side where they're actually in a different hemisphere. Cisco Telepresence was really an amazing product, but not without limitations. I was actually tasked to try to extend Telepresence. I was working on integrating telepresence with WebEx. And the idea behind it is really to provide more use cases and allow it to be accessed by more participants. But it was really clear early on that by doing so, you really break that same room experience down. You add to that the high cost and also the dedicated furniture and hardware, and you could see that this really product wasn't scalable and wasn't accessible the way it was meant to be. Another attempt to provide that same room experience was actually done by Google with the Starlight project. The idea was to take high definition cameras, combine them with depth sensors, and create a model of a person from different angles, and then project that model of that person across the table as a 3D image on a special screen. That project had the same issues with accessibility and cost. Google is still working on making it more accessible, and we'll see what happens with that. But you can understand the problems that we currently face with that same room experience. I was the chief product officer of Zoom during the pandemic. We had a feature then that was called virtual background. I'm sure many of you have experienced it, especially when you were all meeting from your home and you were going into these meetings from your messy bedrooms. It really provided that privacy, but it also created uh, fun and personality to these ongoing meetings we were on. Now, this capability 
wouldn't have been possible if not for AI. The ability to separate between the person and their background requires AI technology and actually got better and better over time using machine learning iterations. Now, take that to the future. Think of building that same in-room experience or same room experience, but generated with AI and augmented reality with high-definition cameras. You can create the same experience, but without the limitations of scale and cost. Now, the idea of bridging that physical gap is really what I'm talking about. But what about bridging the emotional ones? The ability to communicate empathy through technology, also called as digital empathy, is really could deepen our connections and our understanding. <clears throat> if you think back about uh, you know, a pivotal moment in Zoom, where we introduced a feature called live transcription. That feature was really not a nice-to-have feature. It really provided the ability to have people that are hearing impaired join the meetings that the world was going through. Now, take that capability to the future and apply it to emotional communication where AI systems don't just translate words, but also are able to translate emotional subtext and nonverbal cues. Think about all the people who really have a hard time to understand these nonverbal cues, especially when they're in virtual meetings. And in many cases, these cues get lost. Now, let me give you two examples. Think of an artist standing on stage, singing a song for the first time, being able to get the feedback from the end audience, both from the people in the auditorium and also people remotely online, live while they're singing. Another example, think about a CEO running an all-hands meeting and being able to understand while giving a product announcement what the employees are thinking, both the people in the cafeteria next to him and everyone across the world. Now, there are a lot of people who have deep concerns about AI dehumanizing communication. I have a completely different vision. Digital empathy has the potential to revolutionize the way not just how we talk, but also how we feel and how we connect in the digital landscape. It promises a future where technology can deliver not just our messages, but also our emotions. Thank you.